So this is the principle of least action, okay? The action is given by the, um, by adding up or summing the difference in the, in the um, kinetic energy and potential energy. So let me tell you what I mean by those. And I notice that you don't really need to see it. What I mean by this is that this is the energy of motion. All right, so this is the energy that something has simply by moving. Something that moves has more energy than something that's just sitting there if they're both in the same place. Okay, it's just got more. Um, a hot gas has more energy that molecules are bouncing around faster and faster than a cold gas, that sort of thing. The principle, the kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Potential energy, broadly defined, is the potential to do work. So, what I mean by this would be a river coming upon a fall, right? Um, dams generate power, and the way they do it is by converting the potential energy of water at one level into energy of motion as it goes over the waterfall. Okay, so that's the potential to do work. So the principle of least action states that any system in nature will progress in such a way that the difference in the energy of motion and the potential to do work is smallest over that path. So you add up the, the different, you take the difference in the kinetic and potential energy at every spot as it travels, okay? And the path that it will take is that singular path whose action is smallest, the principle of least action. So you say, all right, well, I thought Newton did all that. Why don't we just use Newton's laws, which I would respond, Shut up. We're going to do it this way. <laughs> because it's more general. And then you might say, well, all right, well, what good does it do? Newton's laws are kind of easy. And, you know, engineers been using them. What's been, you know, what, what, what do you got? Where's, you know, where's the beef? And the beef is that if I mathematically calculate the different, this difference for every possible path, okay, every path that I can imagine, then the one that the system will actually take is the minimum. So if I calculate the minimum, then I can predict the path. All right? And it applies to more than mere M&Ms. It applies to any system. 